Welcome to Dads with Mikes. Today I have a very special guest. I have to say special because she's my wife. <laughs> so this is my wife, Alex. Alex, welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, this is, uh, this is going to be interesting. I'm curious to see how this turns out. Uh, you're not a dad, obviously, but you're my wife. You're the mother of my kids. So I thought it would be uh, fun to have you on the show. So thanks for joining me on Dads with Mikes. Thanks. I was waiting for the invite, to be honest. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I knew it, this day would come. Yeah, it came. It came. It's uh, <laughs> episode 26, so that's not bad. There you go. Pretty good. So how about you tell everybody about yourself? <laughs> well, I'm your wife. Um, I am 34. I have two kids. <laughs> live here with you. <laughs> um, I uh, used to be a lawyer. I was a lawyer for 10 years. Um, and I retired you. <laughs> well, well, check out that video if you haven't. <laughs> um, Pretty good. And yeah, then I, I quit. I quit and I became, a, I don't know, what do you call it? A stay-at-home wife, mom, homemaker. I do my thing on X. Peaceful fam life. Follow. <laughs> At peaceful fam life. Yeah, we'll have. Um, don't worry, we'll have your <laughs> all your coordinates. And um, yeah, originally from Romania, moved here to Canada when I was six, and that's pretty much. Uh, I feel like that sums it up in a nutshell. Okay. Now, be honest. Yeah. Have you? Uh, did you see any of the shows? I have. Uh, I've only watched two full episodes, um, but uh, I've seen parts of the other ones. The clips that I post. No, no, not the clips, but I've like watched the first, I don't know, minutes okay. of your other videos. All right. But just because I feel like I know what you're about. <laughs> so I, I feel like, so. you know, if I listen to it, it's just, I know you. So <laughs> that's my excuse. Okay. Have you hey, watched any ones? of my episodes? <laughs> yeah, I have actually. The full? Uh, no, not the full no. thing. Yeah, yeah. No. No, because you see, it's like we see each other all the time. Yeah. So. Yeah, we do see each other every day. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> okay, which ones did you see? So I saw the one with Harrison. Okay. And I saw the one with Dustin. It was very funny. Well, we watched it together, yeah. but it was very yeah. funny. Yeah, that I was an interesting it. one. Mm -hmm. A little bit different than what I usually do. Yeah. Yeah, I laughed out loud many times. It was cool. Yeah. Okay, so... We're, we're pretty, look, we, I've, I talk about you a lot on the show. Do you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> and our kids, I don't, you know, I don't specifically mention them. Well, I think I have, but I don't go mm -hmm. much into detail. But we're pretty much on the same page, right? In terms of parenting? Yeah, we are. Wouldn't you say? We are. Yeah. Okay. And that wasn't really a, it wasn't an, an accident. It was just, or we didn't plan mm -hmm. for it that way, I think. No. Would you say? No, I don't. Well, I don't think we really ask ourselves the questions that you tell people. Like you should definitely ask yourselves this before having kids. I think yeah. like maybe that's like learning from your mistakes. I don't know, but we didn't really sit down and be like, okay, well, how are we going to discipline our kids? And we we didn't really do that. Yeah, I don't. We? I don't remember having that conversation. No. no, I think it just so happened. And then I started. Well, then when I. Became so for myself when I became a mom, then you know, all these things come up, all these triggers, all these challenging situations. And I think, like, the hardcore I don't know how you call it like traditional discipline of like getting angry that didn't work for me. So I really looked for other ways. And then I found different accounts on Instagram, mostly back then, to help me sort of manage my own emotions and teach my kids how to do that too. So I think by us sort of living it, then we adjusted accordingly. But we didn't plan on it necessarily. We didn't say, oh, peaceful parenting will be our thing. Or we didn't decide. No, no, it wasn't <laughs> like that at all. It would have been mm -hmm. funny if we did, though. But no, I don't remember uh, talking about it specifically. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask you, like, how, do you, how would you handle a tantrum or anything like that? They just what? We didn't even know tantrums existed before having kids, I think. We no, were sure not we enough. Did. I mean, okay, but I wasn't enough around enough kids to know, like, all right, like, this is what a meltdown is, and it's going to happen a lot, and here's how you handle it. I didn't know all that. 
Well, for you though, it was different because you you have a younger sister and she's nine mm. years younger mm. than you, and you mm. mentioned it multiple times that you were babysitting her, yeah. right? Yeah. Even as a uh, yeah. when you were younger. Mm-hmm. Now, did you have to deal with anything at all in terms of discipline? Did your parents make you discipline her when they weren't around? No, I mean I took it upon myself to discipline her, <laughs> but I'm not sure a nine year old has the best ways. Um, you were babysitting her at nine years old. Yeah, nine, ten. Well, they like, yeah, when alone? she was a baby. Yeah, like, say she would nap or something, and so they went somewhere. <laughs> I okay. did, I did. Interesting. I did, yeah. Um, I don't remember exactly how I handled it. I don't think she was, like, yeah, maybe she was kind of challenging sometimes. But I would just kind of be rude with her, and it worked, or something like that, you know? I don't remember exactly. But, you know, being a teenager and, yeah, taking care of a two-year-old, that uh, I'm not sure I handled it the best way. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember those parts, though. I remember, like, changing her diaper and all those, like, baby things, but I don't remember right. so much afterwards. It's like my parents had the most trouble with her, and it wasn't necessarily on me. Okay. Yeah, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I I don't think we... uh Well, no, so we didn't specifically speak about it before having kids, how we were going to discipline, how we were going to raise them, which values... So, yeah. I don't know, would you say, like, we're, like, a special case we are. <laughs> that we just sort of found each other and is everything sort of fell in line? Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, I, it's funny you say that because I was thinking this morning that I don't know in real life any other couple like us that are actually so much on the same page that have grown together. So, we've been together now for, like, 12 years, give or take a few months. Yeah. Um. So, you know, we were kids when we met. And I think some couples, they grow and they grow apart. And then it's really challenging, especially when they have kids later on in their, in their marriage or their, their relationship. I think for us, what happened is that we really grew together. So it's kind of like we learned so many things together. Like I was, what, we were just talking about this yesterday. I was 22 when we met, right? Yeah. So 22 when we met and we got engaged, actually. Right. Well, yeah. No, no. Well, you 23. turned 23. Right, 23 yeah. when we got engaged. Yeah. And so I think because, well, I was young, you were six years, you know, you're six years older than me. But I think because of that, like, we went through a lot of firsts together. And maybe we're lucky, I don't know. We just grew together and we learned together things. So we're shaping our parenting together. We're shaping our worldview and our values and everything as we grow, right? Yeah. But I just, I don't know many couples, again, in real life that have this sort of bond. Yeah, it's just that most of the time, like, couples will have one that does most of the discipline. Yeah. And then the other one is more, not laid back, but like... Lenient? The affectionate one, lenient. And I have to say, you know, I I often think that sometimes I do most of the disciplining. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, we... In terms of being just a, a more of a hardball. Stricter. Stricter. Yeah. And I do tend to raise my voice more than you. Mm-hmm. You you can't raise your voice, though. You don't have... <laughs> you just don't have the voice for it. <laughs> I've heard I, you try I mean, to yell. Yeah. It's, it's not pretty. It's try... Like, for me, that's yelling. Or, like, that's really re- me raising my voice. Yeah. But... Does it just not come across it's just, as that? No, it's, it's just a, it's an awkward sound <laughs> okay. that comes out of your mouth. Oh, man. Yeah, so I, I, I would recommend for you to st- stick to your affectionate... <laughs> to my kind voice. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we spoke about that like even a few years ago, I think it came up, because you don't, like, you don't want to be the one parent that's always being a hard ass, and then the other one is always nice. Because then the kids, they know, right? Because you're the favorite. Yeah, because then they know, oh, I'll go to her because she says yes to everything or whatever, which I don't. But they kind of learn, right, who to seek when. Yeah, which our kids don't do, I don't think. No. I don't think I've ever said no to something and then, they, you know, they went, no, oh, no. let me go check with mommy. Maybe no, 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 for sure. Mommy will say yes. No. No, but that's, that was something we put clearly, I think, on the table. Like, you cannot contradict me in front of the kids. Yeah. Right. No, we don't. We don't contradict each other. And also, we do, something that we don't do that I think a lot of parents maybe do mm. is that the father sometimes will say, I don't know, go ask mommy. Oh, yeah. 
So by doing that, the father is mm. relinquishing the power to the mother. Right. So like, well, you're a parent too. So what are you doing? Do you don't you don't have a say in this? That's true. And I've I've never once said that. So I don't I don't think they've ever asked me anything. And I didn't want to deal with it. And I said, <laughs> I don't know. Go ask mommy. Or go check with mommy. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too. I think maybe they don't want to deal with it, like you said. They just don't want to risk. Like, yeah, but then they shouldn't be surprised if <laughs> that if the, the the kids don't respect him after. And no, I know. They'll never go to him for guidance for anything. Yeah. Because everything is has been go see mommy. Yeah, that is a weird kind of thing, no? It's weird to say that. To never make a decision. Like, who's the boss here? You should both be, like... The mommy, according to to this specific situation, it's the mommy. And that's something that the kids uh, pick up on because that's what the father is doing. He's just dumping everything on the mom. (laughs) Yeah, and then you hear all those moms online being like, I have to take care of everything, and he doesn't know anything in the house. And, you know, then it's all those complaints of like, dude, what are you doing? I'm doing everything here. Pull your own weight, you know? The the mental load thing? Yeah, the mental load yeah. thing. So many moms complain. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a big thing on social media and all those Facebook groups of mothers complaining. What do yeah. you think about that? No, I quit those groups. You did? <laughs> I couldn't stand it anymore. It's good for content, though. I mean, it was good for content, but it was just a nonstop. Um, <laughs> like, all these women were so aggravated with their partners like all the time he doesn't do anything he's never home he plays his video games basically like useless and to me at some point i was like you know what you guys picked wrong i don't know what to say anymore like here was that's why i've i I, i've always been saying talk to each other before you get married yeah because of cases like that and i used to look at it a lot and see it you know, instead of being surprised after you get married and have kids, mm-hmm. oh, I didn't know it was going to be this way. Yeah. You know, did you not date? Did you not ask <laughs> questions? You mm-hmm. hear about women all the time going on dates and, oh, I ask him everything so that I know everything. <laughs> well, what are you asking him? Like what his favorite color is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but you know what's the funny thing? It's like, oh, he, he spends his whole time like playing video games. I'm sure he did this before having kids. Yeah. Did you think he would drop everything and start helping you all of a sudden? Is like, that a red flag? Video games? I mean, for me it is. <laughs> because But like usually... how much is too much, you know? I, I, I didn't, I never, I don't do video games and I didn't before we got married. That's I'm, why I'm I married just... you. <laughs> That's one of the reasons you're not a video game guy. Because you know, you know that type. I mean, I, I'm, this is maybe too stereotypical, but this is just my opinion. It's that vibe where... They just come home and they can't wait to get on their game. Yeah. It's like, all right, hello, let's talk, let's have a chat, how was your day? You know, like, you can't just come home as a husband and a father, worse, and just start playing your video games. It's just the same as if you're just opening a beer and sitting in front of the TV. That's the same vibe. Right. It's me, myself, and I, and I, that's so awful. That's a, that's a man that hasn't grown up yet. Yeah. And I'm sorry if you like video games, guys, whoever's <laughs> watching or listening. If, if, if you have it under control, then okay. Like, mm-hmm. is that, is some video right. games okay? Like, well, like, I, I guess, know, like one in, hour. Instead of Netflix, it's that, I guess. But yeah. I don't know. Most, most people seem to have an issue with it. Where they play and there's so much into it that they can't stop. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, well, if they don't have it under control, then obviously he's taking over the whole lives and they yeah. don't prioritize the right things. Yeah, true. Okay, so that, that's one thing that we've seen online, the mothers complaining. And there's a lot of complaining about them doing most of the chores mm. and everything around the house. Yeah. And that's that seems to be a contentious issue online. I've seen both sides of the fence i've seen mm. guys say that you know what i i need her to tell me what to do yeah yeah yeah. i, I just and you know i i'll still help mm-hmm. but i just need to know i'll ask her okay what needs to be done today and then and i'll do it what do you think about it? is that fine is that okay as long as you're doing that is that fine because a lot of women will say 
Well, no. Well, he should know what <laughs> we need to do during the week. He lives here, doesn't he? <laughs> he knows there's laundry, groceries, mm. cleaning. Why do I need to tell him what to do? Yeah. But just that. some guys are like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think also because some girls are so, um, like controlling over the whole household that maybe this is my hypothesis, but maybe the husband is like so scared of like touching something of like, Oh, maybe if I'm doing the laundry now, I'm going to mess up her whole system for the week. So they're like, I don't know, dude. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> I think that's the strategy. I think some guys maybe. willingly mess up things maybe. so that their wives will just say, oh, you know what? Okay. I've shown you five times already. You don't get it. I'll just do it. Yeah, And then they, they get what they want. The wife does everything. Yeah. They pretended not to know how to fold a shirt, but... Although, yeah, well, totally. But the ladies should be smart enough to know <laughs> that this is a strategy. And be like, dude, I don't care. You fold it wrong as long as you fold it. It's kind of like a kid, right? You fold it wrong as long as you do it. I'm happy. Because there's yeah, also but that. I feel like some women they they just ha need to have it done right. So yeah, but then you have to do it yourself. So if I, I you know I used to be very much a perfectionist too, and it's like if it wasn't right, I'd get like Ugh, I'm gonna redo it. But then I don't like this is just stupid. Why am I doing this? If it's right. done, it's done, right? So I think you also have to let go a little bit of that perfectionism as a wife and be like, listen, he wants to help. That's amazing. Cool. Also, I feel like we're a team, so everybody should just do something. Have your jobs assigned. Like, I rarely take out the trash. You know, you take you do that most of the time, and it's like yeah. kind of like those things where like I've never mowed the lawn. We've been living here for six years. I've never done it once. You know. No, I do that. So yeah, so maybe that's just one of those things. But <laughs> well, we might trigger some feminists today. But there's just some mm -hmm. things that fall more in line with what the man should do and you do all the cooking yeah yeah but it's not even offending them because look like i do laundry most of the time yeah. you do it too sometimes it's not like oh my god i'm not gonna touch this because i'm a man no you still do it if you know that it has to be done and i didn't get to it yeah so it's one of those things where like just work together like it shouldn't be complicated it shouldn't be like i'm taking a paper and let's write down your responsibilities it shouldn't be like that right no it's like okay i see this needs to be done i'm free now i, I can do it i'll do it it's simple well now you're a lot more free than i am <laughs> yeah which is why now I, but, I do a lot yeah. more, more i think also but yeah still it's just like work together i i think Couples yeah, overcomplicate things because it's an ego thing of like, yeah. oh, I do more. Or, you know, he doesn't do anything, but I do it all. And look at me, you know? I think, they, they think they like having that over their husbands, though. Is that a thing? Do the women like to complain? <laughs> Good question. I just lost like five female <laughs> followers. I mean, she likes to complain. They like having that over their husbands, being able to say, being able mm -hmm. to say I, I do most of the things in the house. I don't know. They kind of use it as um, as um, a complaint. Okay. It's not like oh, I do more. It's more like I do like they're not happy about it. Right. So it's. So they do like, want the husband to do more. Yeah, yeah, they do. Okay. Yeah. How, how am I with that? With uh, asking questions, I'm I'm genuinely asking. I'm curious. I do I ask. I don't think I do. No, I don't. I don't ask. What do we need to do no. this week? No. I have access to our calendar, <laughs> so yeah. That's a, that's a hack, by the way, and I've I've spoken about it before on mm -hmm. X. Uh, we we have a shared Google calendar now that we yeah. didn't used to have before. It's great. And uh, now I don't need to ask you anymore. Is it okay if I mm -hmm. record a podcast Tuesday evening? Yeah. I look at the schedule and mm -hmm. I see that it's blank and yeah, I do my true. thing. No, like we, I don't know why we should have done this much faster, but yeah, yeah, we just recently did this. It's good. Really good. Life changer. Yeah. It's so much easier. At first I had like a paper thing and I used to always forget to write my stuff on it. And no, yeah. now it's just in the phone and it's easier. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. But so no, I don't, I don't ask you uh, what do we need to do? No. No. Like, I don't remember you ever asking that. You're just asking like, do we have anything like different or specific about the week right but right. not like do i need to do laundry today 
<laughs> no, well, you don't just, ask that. And you know, after a few years, you get the hang of it. You know, you're mm. used to the routine. You know that, uh, let's say on Saturdays we uh, change the bed sheets. Yeah, that's the thing. Now I we changed. know that girls freeze is on whenever I get whatever to it. Wednesday. But I mean, that's that's your thing now. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's always been your thing, mostly. Yeah, even when you were working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're okay yeah, with that. It's fine. It's fine. It's kind of like well, yeah, I need to do my grocery because I cook. Right. I don't like I've seen this and I don't know people can comment if they do this or not but I've seen this where it's like the husband does the grocery and then the wife cooks. But like how does he know what to get? She makes a list. Yeah, but there's a list but then you always like there's something different or like okay on the list I put cucumbers but the cucumbers look disgusting. You don't even do lists so anymore, like, do you? No, I never do lists. Because they say I just, that's a bad thing. They say if you go into a grocery store without a list and you're buying things that you shouldn't. Or, no, no. That's, that's for people that have problems with impulse control. Right. I buy the veggies that look good and the fruits that look good. And it's pretty much, you know, then easy peasy. Yeah. It's kind of like people have to get organized, <laughs> you know, organized, check your ego, work as a team. It's just not that complicated. I, no, I agree. I agree with that. I, I, I've always been on the side of the man should also know what's what's going on in the house and what needs to be done. And mm -hmm. it's not complicated. Uh, we're we're not picky. We we don't. No. We maintain our home, but we don't like go full out. We don't dust every day or. No. It, it, and I've spoken about it before, and we a lot of people they they you know they're very. I mean, they're clean freaks, maybe, and they need to have the vacuum, you know, the house vacuumed every day. And well, I do almost every day, but like I know well, what just, you mean. I know yeah. what you mean. Like too under much under the kitchen table every day because the kids yeah. make crumbs. But I mean, the whole aside time. from that, how often do you clean the whole house? Yeah, no, not that often. Then people are gonna think our house is dirty. Our no, house but <laughs> is super clean, by the way. No, it, it's 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 because we don't make a mess. You you know there's the kids make a mess. Well, yeah, but it's just your toys and they pick it up at the end right. of the day. Yeah. Cuz you know that how people say like oh I've seen this too much online where it's like they film their house and it's like well it's just because kids live here but their house is disgusting. Oh yeah. It's a whole big mess, dishes everywhere, food on the floor. Like what are you doing? This is not kids live here. So we're not really not like that. So any you people could drop buy our house anytime it will be clean yeah they will not find clean enough well except for a few toys on the floor sure. like fine that, which is normal kids live here. yeah yeah but it's not like no but my point was like i think i feel like some people the, the ones that complain that they don't have time and then you know they're mm -hmm. overwhelmed and mm -hmm. uh too much too many things to do yeah you know maybe just let go of some things you know? <laughs> right but i i realize True. it's not possible for everyone uh a lot of people, they, they need their, their things a certain way. and Like the guy that mows the lawn when it's not even long. Like you're just looking for things to do now. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> men tend to be picky with their lawns. Yeah. That's just... Yeah. Yeah, I think there's that too. We're just like way too chill. I don't think we're too chill. I no, think we're... Well, no, but you know what I mean. It's like we don't really get into arguments or whatever because we don't... It's kind of like we're just living. Life. Yeah, we, we we don't fight much, do we? We don't. <laughs> no, we don't really. Yeah, is that why? Why do you think that is? Because we're chill. That's what I'm saying. Because we're perfect. <laughs> we're pretty kidding. chill. Because I think also I think we're we've gotten pretty good at this emotional intelligence thing. People are not gonna believe us. No. You t I tell people that we don't fight. Mm. Because what does fighting mean? Fighting to me means yelling and finger pointing and criticizing and yeah. complaining. That's mm -hmm. what fighting means to me. So we don't fight. No. Do we have disagreements? Sure. Yes. We don't fight though. No. I, I, I even right. have trouble saying arguing. Right. We very rarely. We've, we argue, but okay, occasionally I would say. And because we know yeah. how to deal with each other. Yeah. I, I know how sometimes I get upset with you. But I just know how to control myself. Yeah, and how to and talk to And I'm the to same me. way with the kids most yeah. of the time. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like you're the same way. You know how to regulate your own emotions. You know how to control your emotions. Mm -hmm. I know how to talk to you and the kids. You know, there a lot of people when they fight, it's really because 
they think they're right, the other one is wrong, and like, how dare you? But also people have not learned empathy and they have not learned how to put themselves in other people's shoes and understand the other side. Yeah. You know, it's like that day when you got upset because of, you know, the thing with the bike. Right. Like, did I get angry and triggered because you were angry at like, no, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna like, you know me, I'm going to wait for this to pass a little talking calmly and uh, resolved. You know, that, that, you know that's, that's one time I didn't handle it well. Uh, should we just tell people? Because sure, then they're sure. going to wonder what the hell sure, we're talking sure, about. Sure. <laughs> uh, so I was, I was outside and I wanted my son, our son to, <laughs> I said my son, our son to practice riding his bicycle without the training wheels mm -hmm. as he's been doing all summer long. Yeah. And uh, he's been doing okay and he's not using the training wheels that, anymore. Uh, so we went out one time to, for, for him to keep going, you know, to keep practicing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we went out as a family, all four of us. Uh, Adriana was on foot or was yeah. she on, also on her bicycle? No, she was walking. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, so you, okay, so we were all walking and he was on his bicycle. Yeah. And I was close to him, keeping an eye on him. And then it just, it wasn't working. I think he was distracted by his sister. And by you, oh. like sort of doing your own thing. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't focused and he wasn't doing well. And after a few times of telling him to to just keep going and focus, just mm -hmm. look at what you're doing. Uh, I don't think I lost it. What? What? No, you I just said, said like, that's it. Because I really, I warned him once. I said, okay. Because mm. at, at this point he was crying and getting upset with himself. Right, right. So I said, okay, if, if it's not working, we're, we're going to stop. So mm -hmm. just focus mm -hmm. and relax and do what you know what to do. Because he, he mm -hmm. was doing, he was not doing good. And he, he had done much better before mm -hmm. when it was just me and him. So I don't know if it, having his sister there distracted him. I think it did. So I warned him once. I said, okay, look, you're, you're crying. It's not working. If you're doing something and you're crying, you're not going to do well. Right. So sure enough, he did it again. He kept crying and, 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 you know, he wasn't doing it well. So I said, okay, get off the bike. Mm -hmm. He got off the bike and I, I took the bike home. Yeah, and we walked and home. And you guys finished, you guys finished your, uh, your walk. Yeah. I brought the bike by, back home. Mm -hmm. uh, I was upset, obviously. I didn't yell at him, though. I just said, no, get off yell. the bike. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was, that, that was the end of that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you guys came back home. Mm-hmm. And then you, so you brought the bike back out. Yeah. <laughs> right? Right. And then I found out that you guys went again to ride his bicycle without me. Mm -hmm. And that's not the part that upset me. I don't care if you go without me. Right. But when he, uh, I think it was our daughter that came back in and said, uh, we went back and Lucas was riding his bicycle. And I got upset <laughs> because... I had told him, that's it for today. You're not riding your bicycle. And so what, <laughs> what pissed me off <laughs> is that you took him back when I had said that it was over. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was sort of my way. I wanted him to realize that if he's not going to focus and if he's going to keep crying, then we're not going to do this. That he's going to try or that we're going to try right. again when he's calm. Uh, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So I sort of felt like, <laughs> like shaft, like you went, you know, behind, not behind my back, but you, mm. you undermined me mm -hmm. by taking him back out there. And it sort of makes me or that, what I thought would make it seem like, well, he, he just didn't go because daddy wasn't in the mood. Right. Which no, I'm sure he wasn't that, but my, my, so my, my thinking was, and that's what I told you. Like, by the end of our walk, he was calm. Yeah. And I said, should we go back out on the bike so that... Because I didn't want him to keep this memory of I suck. So I said, should we go back on the bike and just practice a little bit more so that you f end this day with, like, a good feeling? So he said, right. okay. Right, and my thinking... Sorry to cut you off. But my thinking was the opposite. I wanted <laughs> it to have the opposite effect. <laughs> right. Meaning that... 
you weren't focusing, you were crying, you mm-hmm. were complaining. So it's not going to work. So if you do that, we're not doing it. Yeah. So I wanted to, to him to leave with the feeling of, okay, I, I was, I didn't have the right attitude. Mm-hmm. And my, you know, my, my father was right. So we're going to try to try another time. I wanted him to have that bad feeling just for a while at least. Mm. So that he, he, he could yeah. realize, you know what? Next time I'm going to do better and I'm going to focus like daddy said. Right. Yeah. I understand yeah. your thinking. No, no, I know. And I understand yours. I think like for me, it was like that amount of time was like, that was the next time. <laughs> right. But you know, in the beginning I mean, of it was this. right after. No, I know. I wanted him to <laughs> stew in that frustration a little bit well, more. Yeah, but he already stews and like Which feeling bad Which is probably bad, bad on my part. I don't know. I don't know. He's already not too confident. So I feel like I didn't want to yeah push yeah. that but it's funny because at the beginning we said we <laughs> we pretty much agree on the parenting style and here we are saying we really i mean we don't we always had agree. An, a different approach yeah yeah no i know i think that's normal if we i think we if we always agree there'll be a problem no they, they say that it's Maybe. good to have disagreements and yeah yeah because we learn to cause argue we learn. and yeah. all that stuff and they say it's good to argue but i mean it's good to have a conversation like we have but people are going to assume that if enough. we don't fight it's because we're each holding stuff inside Mm. And not communicating and not sharing, but that's not the case at all. Mm. I don't know. We just talk things out. So besides this, this one yeah. time that I, I think I let you have it. Yeah. No, I, I did I well, yell at you? I didn't. I yeah, cussed yeah, at you. You kind of raised your voice. I raised my voice and I cussed. Yeah. And uh, the kids were inside. I was in. The, I was outside, and I don't think they heard us. <laughs> I don't know. They might I don't be. know. Maybe they heard us. Well, Look, I, I'm real and I'm authentic on yeah, social yeah. media. I'm authentic on the podcast. I mess up. I messed up this one time because I I, I yeah. took it out on you. Yeah, but I, I mean, yeah, at the end it was fine. Yeah, I apologized and uh, yeah. we moved on and that's yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. But aside from that, we also have other disagreements and yeah. it, it doesn't end up in me cussing at you or, <laughs> no, or, no. or raising my voice. Like that rarely happens. <laughs> it rarely happens. And yeah. why? Because we, we know how to talk. Yeah. You know what I realized just the other day I was thinking about this? I don't know if you've spoken about this on social media, but the fact that we we were not living together before getting married. Did you ever speak about that? I did Because I think that's so out of the norm for like 2024. Like, yeah. So we got married 2015 and people thought, I don't know, I think our friends maybe thought we were absolutely crazy. So what we oh, did yeah. is that we bought a condo and we sort of put our, all our furniture in there and then... On the night of our wedding, we moved in together. So, like, that was the first, right, time we lived together after our wedding. And, like, I think it's a pretty old school thing to do. I don't know anybody else who's done that. But I think just, I think that's also just speaking to how much we trusted our relationship. Because it's like, who gets married nowadays before living together? You know? That's a whole other subject, but I don't... I think most people nowadays live together before getting married. Yeah. I don't know the numbers on that, obviously, yeah. but I'd, I'd probably take a guess that most people do live together before they decide yeah, to marry. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, we were talking about, like, people that act surprised after the kids are born of, like, how their spouse is. Yeah. It's like, well, surely they've lived together. Like, we didn't even live together before committing to this relationship. Right. Right. And it still, like, worked out because, I don't know, like, did we get lucky or we just knew ourselves? I don't know. I don't know the answer, but... Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's some, in some cases it's going to be a situation where it's just uh, destiny and, you know, mm. two people finding each other and they're perfect for each other. Yeah. Which we are. We are. <laughs> And mm. so we didn't necessarily need to have everything figured out beforehand. Yeah. Yeah, I think we just trusted that it would be fine. Or that it would work. Or, I don't know, that like we love each other. Because neither one of us is the type to do something on an impulse. No. We're very calculated people. If you ask me, yeah. I mean, we, we got what? We got engaged five months after we met? Mm. Six? Nine. Well, I mean, we spoke oh, about yeah, it okay. maybe five months after we met, but we did get engaged about nine months. Nine months. Yeah. For most people, they probably think that's way too fast. Especially at 22, 23 years old. Like, I remember everybody was... Didn't my, my mom tell you, like, you married her? We took her too soon, you know? 
You remember that? She, she, that? she said that to me? Yeah, and you told that to me and you were not very happy about that because she told you like after the wedding or whatever. Okay. She said, you, she told you something like, oh, you took her from us too soon or something like that. I don't remember that. Don't remember that? You were no? not happy with that. Really? Mm-hmm. Why was I not happy with that? I don't know. I think because it's, I don't know why exactly. I don't remember that it was so long ago, but you're like, why would she say that to me? Like, we had spoken about it. We, well, I think it's just something people say, know. you know? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. That's funny. But I think everybody thought that it was kind of fast. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, no, I know. Most people now, they probably take their time and make sure that it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Do they? I don't know. Do you think? I'm just... I don't know. They meet on Tinder, so come on. <laughs> you kind of have to have a... Uh, you know, a period there where you really get to know the person's not a serial killer or something like that. Also, we did meet online, so I don't know. Yeah, we did, so. I guess it's the same. <laughs> no, I know, I know. It sounds funny because I, I keep telling people you gotta, you gotta have these conversations before you get married and have kids, but mm-hmm. if you're if you're like us, then it's just, it was just perfect and the timing was good and you went with your gut. Yeah. But I don't know. We, you make your own luck. I still have to pick you. Yeah, you had to make a smart decision. <laughs> right. He so was dating I... like three other ladies at the same time when he met me. What a player. And he said, well, I also had a date with this and this and this. And I was like, all right. Like, <laughs> not phased at all. You do what you want. Because uh, it's kind of like I knew that we would be together. So I was like, all right. Okay, so, so let me, yeah, okay, let, let, <laughs> let's explain. I was so, very confident. I, I met you online mm-hmm. on a dating site. Mm-hmm. At the same time, my friend had fixed me up with somebody. Mm-hmm. And then I also went out with my friends to a bar and I met a girl there. Mm-hmm. So this all happened around the same time. So I'm not a player. I did, that's not <laughs> something I used to do. I, I, I've never, I had, before that time, I had never dated more than one girl at a time. Mm. And, and it's just, and I remember, I remember this clearly because I was like, oh, are you kidding me? And I was in a drought for so long. <laughs> like a, a cold street like you wouldn't believe in dating wise. And then all of a sudden, instead of getting one, maybe two, you got three options. One of which was you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like how you say options. Like it's a fucking menu. <laughs> <laughs> hey, watch your language. Oh, yeah, sorry, I can't. It's, uh, it's YouTube. Come on. No, no, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, I don't it's... care. <laughs> they can cancel me. Uh, cancel. Yeah, no, but I mean, hmm. what would you call it? Selections? Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> worse um i don't know i don't know i guess so people I don't know. it happened it happened that way and i made the right choice obviously we're married now we have kids mm. speaking of which how do you think we're doing with the kids pretty good i think the kids are good i mean they're the little best kids i've ever known but <laughs> I'm are biased. you biased a little bit <laughs> for sure i'm biased I think they're great. They're great kids. I told so. everybody they never have tantrums. Yeah, no. I, can you can I, you confirm? I, I they never they literally never have tantrums or kids. <laughs> they don't. High five. We did it. No, but you they don't because we we know them. I mean, they we know cry. how to handle. They cry they, sure, they and cry they a whole bunch, but. yell occasionally. Not rarely, so much. Rarely, I mean, I they fight say. with each other. They, they get argue. They don't they, fight. No, no. True. They, they argue. argue with each other. Yeah. But they don't yell at us or like scream at us or or like no 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 no. Right. I, and what do you think that is? Do we do a good job raising them or they're just this is like the debate and I had this debate yeah. with uh it was the guys from the Call with Dads podcast hmm. where we were talking about like your your kids will pretty much turn out not entirely, but they, they'll turn out pretty much like the way you are. And I've, I told them, yeah. like you and I, we're very calm people in general. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, it's probably likely that your kids will become kind of like you. Yeah. But also, it also depends how you raise them. Mm-hmm. 
So I don't I don't know which one that it's it's more though. Like it's it's I told them it's both. I still think it's both. Which one uh to which extent? I don't know. Mm. Yeah. What do you think about that? I think it's mostly how you raise them. Really? Yeah. I think your kids are like you when you were a kid. They're not like you like you were grown up. I think they're like you like when you're a kid. For example, if I look at her daughter, she she's exactly like I was when I was a kid. Like kind of making like funny jokes, like, like saying things that might sound like an insult or, you know, like things like I'm going to buy a new mom because you don't <laughs> bake me enough cookies. You know, like I, I used to say things like that to my mom. Okay. But then she would actually be triggered by it. But you see, I'm not triggered. I'm like, haha, this is hilarious. So I think it's it's both. It's yes, the kid kind of turns out like you, but the way that you parent them has more of an impact. I think it's also because you know talking about like foster families and all that, and how you can actually help a kid like turn around their behavior. Well, th- their their genes and their genetics are already you know set up. Yeah. But you as a parent can have a huge impact on their behavior so i think it's i think it's both like our kids tend to be more calm and easygoing but right. also you know when they did have like in the when they were younger they had meltdowns or tantrums we handled it pretty well if we hadn't say we started spanking them or whatever they wouldn't have the same behavior now that they do probably right? not i don't think they would have turned out the same so i think the parents role is is crucial and that's why the whole emotional intelligence and regulating your emotions and all that is important. Yeah. That's why I talk about, you know, parenting from the inside out is kind of like the tagline of my ex account, but it's mostly because as a parent, you have to check yourself first. Before you start interacting with that kid, you have to check yourself first. So I think that the parenting style has a big impact on the kid's behavior. And I think that's yeah. why they don't have tantrums anymore. Yeah, no, I can't remember the last time I punished them. And I'm not against punishments per se, mm. but I haven't had to punish them. We haven't had to punish them. No. In a while. Remember. I don't even I remember. remember sending Lucas to his room a couple of times, but it was more in the, in the context of I think he needs a break. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. Very long time ago. Like yeah. three years ago, maybe four years ago. I don't know. No. Yeah, like three maybe. Two three. or three years ago, maybe. Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, and I've so, taken yeah. toys away. I've done that. Yeah, sure. But like that's maybe Not twice in their life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, no, it's just because it, it, we've been able to deal with them. Their outbursts, if you want to call them that. Mm. Uh, just in yeah. a more reasonable way. Yeah. But you know what? I remember like in the beginning when I used to do this whole like, I see that you're upset right now. It's okay to be upset that this kind of thing. Yeah. You were a little bit laughing at me and you're like, this is I bullshit. Was. But then I think what happened and correct me, please tell me how you feel about this. But I feel like you saw that it actually worked and that it was a pretty efficient. <laughs> Most of the time it worked well. And then the kids were able to fast come back from their crying and whatever was happening so we're like oh maybe this is effective because at one point you started being like i see you're upset but it was like super like zero actual yeah it was sarcastic but then you actually started doing it for real yeah no i i I admit it i wasn't (laughs) on board with the whole uh peaceful parenting thing Mm -hmm. at first just because that's not really how i was raised Mm -hmm. um i guess i was raised in a more traditional context and yeah, I, I just thought mm. that, you know, kids misbehave, you punish them, there's a consequence. I mean, mm. you still have consequences now. Yeah, yeah. But like normal consequences, not like... Uh, right. Yeah. It's not like go stare at the wall for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a better way to teach them the lesson mm-hmm. that, you, that you want them to, to learn. Yeah. But no, I, I admit I wasn't on board with uh, your methods in the beginning. <laughs> it wasn't bothering me. Like I said, it's... No. Uh, I saw what you were doing. Yeah. And just like you said, I, I saw that it was working and that it's uh, it was a much more pleasant way of dealing with things. Mm-hmm. I don't like yelling. Who likes yelling? Right. That's, I don't yeah. like telling my son to go to his room for 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. It's not fun. Right. It's not, it's not a good feeling. And then he yells more because he's angry that he's there. And it's, 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 it's like a, Yeah, and then there's the guilt after, too, too, you know? Much. Did I overreact? Oh, mm-hmm. I shouldn't have yelled at him. Mm-hmm. Did I have a bad day and I took it out on him? 
I don't know. Yeah, but most parents don't ask themselves that question, I think. The ones that use like traditional I think a lot methods. of them, they, they feel guilt after the fact. If they feel mm. like they, they went a bit too much overboard. Mm. Yeah, but then why? Then they keep doing it, though. Because like, they don't they learn. Keep, they don't learn from the mistakes, though. <laughs> they keep the same methods. Because they say, oh, man, I don't want to do that again. and then, But they don't work on it. Mm. They don't it's put the in the work, the time and the work and the effort that it takes. True. To control yourself, to work on yourself first, so that it then translates into mm-hmm. you being being a better parent. Yeah, that's true. It's that period in between tantrums. That, that's, you know, the, your working uh, time as a parent. Yeah. I mean, look, yeah, I, I, I get irritated with the kids sometimes, but I, I, sure. I've learned to recognize my own signals. Mm-hmm. If I feel like... I'm about yeah. to lose it. Yeah, like that. I know what to do now. <laughs> Remember when, just like last week or something, when she wasn't eating anything or whatever, she was like not cooperating at dinner and you were like breathing loudly and they were like, what are you doing? <laughs> and you were like, I'm, I'm, I don't know what she said. Like I'm calming myself down or something like that. But then it I turns into a joke. Though, yeah, yeah, yeah. It turned into a joke, but it's kind of like. You know, it's just to say that you do, you kind of, you see yourself going that path and you're like, I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to decide to go on the funny route instead, you know, or whatever you're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. The distraction. Uh, also, at the same time, I feel like it was showing them that, you know what, mm-hmm. instead of yelling at you right now, <laughs> yeah. as a default, I'll, I'm going to breathe. Mm-hmm. It was done in a ridiculous way. I was like. <sighs> yeah, it was funny. I wanted also at the same time to show them that they're starting to get on my nerves. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what it was. Partially. It worked. Also showing them that, you know what, instead of yelling, I'm breathing. And then they thought it was funny? Mm-hmm. Or I don't remember exactly what Yeah, happened. it kind of turned into a big joke and it was right. funny and everybody was just fine. Okay, <laughs> and then did she keep eating or no? I don't remember. Probably not. Probably not. But you see, that's the thing though. And I think that's another lesson that we learned with time is that it doesn't matter so much how much they eat. It's more so like the vibe at the table. Because if we're all angry, then it's really like a bad evening for everybody yes so it's kind of like you know what i think this is what i struggle with most it was like not caring about how much food is actually being eaten at dinner and just so like letting it go and and just yeah a lot of parents think that you have to your kids have to eat every single meal and finish every last bite on their plate yeah but i you know, you, you see a lot more online. People are, I think they're starting to wake up to the fact that, you know, kids are not going to starve themselves. Serve the food. Yeah. Give them healthy options. Mm-hmm. We still have to work on that, by the way. So yeah, I know. You know, we're not perfect. Like, I know we said we're perfect at the beginning of the show. <laughs> we're close. Well, that's the only thing. I, st- I feel like that's the worst. You know, that's the worst of it. Like, that's her biggest You really thing want them to eat, though, and finish. Well, so do I. Not, not necessarily but, finish, but at least, come on, man, like, eat, like, eat something. I feel yeah. so bad if they eat, like, nothing or, like, one bite. But isn't it on them? No, I know, but then it's like, I cooked the meal, and then I feel like it's a little bit my fault because they they're not liking it or, you know. Yeah. Then I feel like I have to give them a snack because their tummy is empty for, like, six hours now. They haven't eaten, and... Then I feel bad. No, I agree. The, 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 <laughs> the, we, we, I mean, we both need to work on that. Mm. I think I, I, I always look at their plates and I'm like, what are you even doing? But they, they do get distracted though. They, they, they yeah. get distracted. And I think it's not that they're, they, they, don't, they don't have an appetite. It's just that they're distracted or they always feel like playing. And they, they always want to go back mm. to the, the playroom and... But we're playing at dinner, like it's like a fun yeah, time. I know. I know, we make it fun. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Well yeah, I, I've spoken about it before and I like that we live in a peaceful home. I don't like to have a home where there's yelling, complaining, mm. crying, whining. Yeah, no. And I think we are we're doing a good job of that. Yeah. So good job. Yeah, thank you. Good job to you. Thank you. I was waiting for that. It took, it, it took you like two, two seconds <laughs> know, there to right? say it back. But, all right. Oh, that's fine. So yeah. this is your time you to shine. Me. Thank you. Uh, let people know where they can find you because you are online. I am. Right? You have an X account? I have an X account at Peaceful Fam Life. Then I love to share just, I mean, I guess I should, I want to frame it as a do? lifestyle yeah, tell thing. Tell them what you do. Right. So it's mostly like a lifestyle thing. 
what I really want to do is inspire other people to live a peaceful life, right? And that involves, you know, healthy lifestyle, healthy eating, that involves emotional regulation, how to deal with your kids, you know, it's relationship, it's just you, yourself, your intuition, trusting yourself as a person before anything else. And it's just, it's all of that. So that's why I feel like I'm talking about, it's, it's more so a lifestyle, right? Okay. It's, it's just how to live, um, yeah, peaceful life. And I started that because, you know, I used to, to work a lot with intuition and spirituality, but what I realized most is that if you want to have any sort of impact in the world, the easier, easiest place to start is with yourself and your immediate family. So if my husband and my kids are at peace and they're, you know, they're happy, they feel fulfilled, then it's like my mission is accomplished. And then they also have that impact in the world. So right. that's why I started really focusing on the, the family unit and helping everybody in the family, the parents and the kids alike, just have a, a, a peaceful environment and and um, a place where they can thrive. So that's why I started that page. Perfect. Give her a follow. It's, uh, she posts a lot about parenting, life in general. Mm -hmm. I, I follow you. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for joining me on Dads with Mikes. Thanks, this was cool.